Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here for the final word. I'm joined by Gary Spain, fresh from Geneva, Switzerland 2, Republic of Ireland 0. We had a little bit of mishap uh, with the sound there, so unfortunately we are recording this for the second time over. But um, talk us through the atmosphere in Geneva. What, what was the uh, general consensus going into the game? Positive, negative, optimistic? Yeah, it was kind of cautiously optimistic. I think people realised that Switzerland were the better team. Um, bit of negativity coming from Tbilisi. Um, obviously disappointed with the, the result, but I thought maybe a bit too much negativity. But anyway, I think people felt right. we had two games, we had one shot uh, in each of them. If we won, one win needed to qualify and anybody would have taken that at the start of the campaign. Probably cautious optimistic and optimism. Mick said it himself. He'd have been happy at nil nil, one one with fifteen, twenty minutes to go, and then see what happens, have a go. But um so the run up to it, yeah, cautiously optimistic and of course the, the game was in doubt as well with the weather. There was horrendous rain all day in Geneva on the match day and the pitch uh there was a pitch inspection at seven o'clock local time, six Irish time. And it was in doubt. I I was on my phone. I was already outside the stadium uh, before the inspection. I was on my phone against the wall of the stadium, ready to book a flight back for tomorrow. If I if we had to stay, the match was going to be played today. Yeah, I think I mean, people back here as well were, were very worried that was going to be called off as well. I'd say that would have been so frustrating had the game been called off and then having to wait around again and then oh, book another flight. You wouldn't have been disaster. refunded or anything like oh, that? Oh, no, I mean, it's and, and I, I actually priced, it was 400 quid on Aer Lingus, so a one-way flight back tomorrow at that notice, and that was the cheapest I could find. And and that was before the game was called off. So had it been called off, I mean, that would have rocketed. I probably wouldn't even be able to get a flight. Yeah. Um, but, Jen, you, you spoke about being optimistic. What was the what was people thinking when they seen that Aaron Connolly was starting? Yeah, I, I, Aaron Connolly definitely, he made a huge difference when he came on at Tbilisi. He had something about him. Anybody I spoke to on Monday or Tuesday in Geneva, we had we have lots of different opinions about Glenn Whelan, about anybody else, about Conor Horan, about Jeff Hendrick, about Seamus Coleman. Uh, everyone I spoke to wanted Aaron Connolly to start and felt he should start. So I think, um, yeah, I was delighted he started because he... He made a huge difference when he came on in Tbilisi. Um, probably didn't didn't work out for him, but I think he's got a great future ahead. Oh, ahead 100%. Of him. Absolutely. Um, you know. dropped Adam Brown in. Was that we were, were you happy about that? We did you care? Um, I, I I care that we miss Conor Horahan from his set piece delivery. Um, he didn't have a great game in Tbilisi. Now I thought Alan Brown played well actually. And he, he brought a lot of energy to the, the team. And he, he wasn't, he was by no means not one of our worst players anyway. I thought he did okay. It's probably between Jeff Hendrick, Conor Horahan, Alan Brown. Um, I would always have Glenn Whelan as it is at the moment, um, anchoring the midfield. But probably Parham two from three there and you can make a case for any of them. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I said, well, I was thinking, well, why not just give him a go and just see what he, if he can produce. He's got a goal in him, and okay. that's probably what Mick was thinking. Um, unfortunately, the way the game panned out, you know, within the first 20 minutes, we were a goal down, and it was a bit of a sucker punch because I thought we were playing decent enough. Um, but what uh, kind of annoyed me was the fact that, okay, they scored, but then he started tinkering with tactics and he was moving Connolly all over the place. And that kind of annoyed me because it seemed to unsettle the rest of the team. It was the shape just didn't look yeah, right. Yeah, well, he, I think he set up to match. Switzerland played 3-5-2. Now, we, I, I, I was a bit surprised. I'm sorry, I was a bit surprised. I was shocked, I'll be honest. I was totally shocked at the formation. And playing Enda Stevens as one of the back three didn't make sense to me. I would have thought, yeah, if you want to go with a back three, there was a case for putting Seamus Coleman in there. I know he hasn't played there, but I, I get the feeling he could. And you've Matt Doherty and Enda Stevens who are natural wing backs and play play them that way, and that's a way to get Seamus and uh, and, and Doherty in, in the same team, which I think a lot of us would would certainly like to to see. But you're shoehorning it in a bit, and maybe so. He wasn't to do it that way. He just went to match Switzerland. No, and it probably worked okay at the back. I think where the issue was 
Um, I don't think it suited James Collins at all. And I mean, it didn't seem to work with himself and, and Aaron Connolly up top. And uh, they were moving around a bit. And unfortunately, then goal, the, going the goal down, he probably felt he had to change it. And was it a 4 1 4 1? I'm not, I'm not even sure what it was. It's, it's, it's changing all over the place. But yeah. how they got their goal was. Uh, Glenn Whelan gets uh, out muscled basically and the, the Swiss midfielder gets a jump on him and gets the ball to Sefovic. But that's what I, I had said to you um, on the on the previous final where that we filmed is um, was Shane Duffy maybe at fault for the goal. Um, the fact that he kind of dives in rather than maybe standing up. You know, if he stands up, maybe he gets the block rather than kind of... Yeah, the maybe. Last, it's the so, slide tackle because yeah. it goes through okay. his legs. By that time, it goes through his legs, it's already in. Yeah. Um, it's that quick, you know. It was a great finish. Um, by, uh, uh, by it Sefer was. Finch. It was right in the corner. He's the guy. I mean, we actually identified as a danger man going back to the Dublin game, and I think he wasn't in the original Swiss squad, but of course he did play and yeah. made a big difference in Dublin as well. Uh, he's a quality player with Benfica. Yeah, um, yeah it, it was a great goal. I mean, it, he he took it very well, right into the corner. Um, em- Embolo was a, was a threat throughout as well. He, he was, was a threat, good. and he's he, he maybe he, 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 he maybe quite player. nervous. Yeah. I thought and I thought to be fair, Ender Stevens handled him quite well. Yeah. But, um, then he, I think at one point, then he switched over for um, to the right hand side. But that brings me to the right hand side, and Seamus Coleman getting that first yellow was a bit silly in my opinion. Um, he, he he was getting himself involved in a lot of things that he just probably didn't need to and. He'd done that before, I think it was the Swiss game in Dublin, and he did it, and Darren Randolph had to run over and just calm him down and pull him away from the crowd because he was just getting into it. And I get it, it's all about getting the crowd up and so on, and I suppose maybe James McLean's inclined to do that as well. But I thought it was just a silly yellow, and I had a weird feeling that yellow was going to come back to haunt us because they had tricky players on the wing, and... He's never going to pull out the challenge of Seamus, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think it was always the type of game away from home against the top seeds, you are going to pick up some yellow cards. I, I thought, granted, Jacka was more the aggressor, I think. Mm, he was shock. the one, he, yeah, well, typical, I think. Yeah, He was the one that raised his hands, and, and once he raised his hands to Seamus's chest, I mean, had there been any higher, he could have got a red. Once he raised his hands, I think... He had to get a yellow card, and I think often in those situations that the ref gives them both. I didn't see Seamus, yeah, he shouldn't have got involved, but I didn't see him doing maybe enough to get a, to get a yellow at the time as well, but it was a, it was a stupid one to pick yeah, up. And kind of similar to Troy Parrott and Moise Keane in the under-21s, that's, that's what it was so. like, but... Uh, yeah, well, that all, obviously that yellow came back to haunt him, but then half-time comes, we're 1-0 we're, we're down, um, you know, I probably think I think we had a Shane Duffy header from a corner. It was probably our only shot in the first half. Yeah, um, yeah, we didn't threaten really too much in the first no, half. That yeah. was from a corner, wasn't it? Um, Glen Whelan corner, I think as well. Yeah. Um, but O'Dowd on for Collins. Um, I think he was playing to Sue Connolly at that point. Um, I didn't think people were saying that O'Dowd had played really well or whatever. I didn't think he he didn't catch my eye. In terms of performances, now he didn't do anything wrong. Um, he didn't give the ball away, unlike his uh, opposite number on the uh, on the on the other side, or his colleague, I should say, um, so. Mr. McLean, um, who for me I just don't understand how he keeps on getting into the starting lineup. Um, I'm all for people who are given passion and heart, but surely it comes to a point where you have ability comes over passion and heart. Well, yeah, I, I think the other thing, I mean, you can't question James's passion, his heart, his commitment. The other thing he does give the team is energy. I mean, he does give huge energy, but he, he hasn't been playing well. Go back to the Switzerland game in Dublin. I mean, I would have been, I think most people would have said, take him off after 60 or 75 minutes. Had we done that, you wouldn't have had those last 15 minutes. I mean, he, he's, he created the goal. Um, yeah. Now, he was poor. There's, there's no. He gave the ball away. It was it something like twenty five times in Georgia? He, he didn't have a great game on Tuesday night. Um, yeah, I mean, I know you've been making a case that perhaps he should, he should be someone to come off the bench with 15, 20 minutes to go. And I think that's if that's the, if that's yeah. the only time he's going to make a difference. Why not bring him on then? Because uh, he's got the engine to do so. But from what I can see from the starting point of view. 
because he's not doing well. He's not doing really well at club level. He's been pushed back to being a left back now. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, anyway, I don't want to dwell too much on him because um, people were giving out and moaning about Hendrick's performance. Um, people giving out about Glenn Whelan's performance, strangely enough. And I thought he... I thought, you look at the games that we've played, um, has he really done anything wrong in any of the games? Maybe it's just a case of his face doesn't fit, or he doesn't have fancy hair, or he doesn't have pink boots, or something like that. He just, he's not a sexy footballer. No, but he's not a fashionable, but I, 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 I know I've said this a lot, I'm a big Glenn Whelan fan, because he does a lot of the, the ugly work, the unseen work, the donkey work, the interceptions, and... Uh, we need him in the team, and it's not as if we we, we have an Angola Kante or someone that mm. we can replace him with. He's like the Irish Gareth Barry. Yeah, and our the, the, as Trap used to call him, his Gattuso. You know, um, I know Trap was a big fan as well. Yeah, um, we need someone to do that role, and possibly Josh Cullen will turn out to be a great star in the role. He's playing really well for Charlton. Uh, we talked about James McCarthy, a fit. James McCarthy playing first team football if he plays Not every regular, week regular for, 90 minutes, he plays yeah. regular 90 minutes for Crystal Palace then in a month's time you could make a strong case for, for James to be starting um, yeah but for me Glenn has to play and I know he has his detractors and, and it's probably a point that very few people will actually criticise James McLean it's probably because it's he does wear his heart in his sleeve. He's one of those players that's going to be a fan's favourite. Mm. But does Glenn Wheel not wear his heart in his sleeve? And I do you think he does. He, he does, but he's not as, um, as fashionable, as obvious about it. A lot of the stuff he does is on scene. It's, he's doing all the defensive stuff. I mean, I know he scored a couple of goals, scored a great goal against George, actually, in Mainz. But, uh, Hit the crossbar against Switzerland. Yeah. In the home game. But it's... Led to the goal. Yeah, which incidentally sure. McLean yeah. set up. Yeah, no, well, yeah, I mean, had we, had James been taken off in Dublin, we probably would have would have lost. You know? Well, who knows? Who but knows? But yeah, but yeah, just in terms of the, the performance in the midfield, probably wasn't that, that great. But I do think as well, and you got to you got to look at this. Is that sometimes you just got to you got to say that probably their players are better than ours, and they had a couple of chances. They had. The, the header from the corner, then they had the ball whipped in, a free kick, and Randolph made a great save. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they hit the post. Um, Coleman, at that point, and I thought in the second half, just before I move on to Coleman, is that we were getting the ball, and what I liked was when Ed Stevens was getting the ball, rather than just looking to lump it up the line, he was doing almost a quiet turn, turn back inside, and trying to keep the ball, so we were just keeping possession. And obviously, Mick had a word at half time is, don't be kicking it long. The pitch, yeah. uh, the pitch was was making it skid anyway. So every time a long ball would go up, it was going into play. But I think Mick must have had a word for him to keep the ball, and still fans weren't happy. Well, yeah, I mean, we did. I, I thought we played better in the second half. We, we we were poor in the first half. I thought we played better. We didn't create. We had quite a bit of possession. We had um, we we pushed them back without creating too many chances. Yeah, and so we did keep the ball, as you say. We we passed it around the back. We we got down the flanks actually and put some crosses in it. They defended very well. I mean, they they are the number one seeds in the group. They were ranked something ridiculous, number two or three in the world not too long ago. I think yeah. certainly they're in the the top ten or whatever for quite a little while. They're a quality Char, side. Shah is a great defender. Yeah. I don't think he'd be at Newcastle for too long. No, he's my neighbour's a big Newcastle fan. He was saying like someone like like Arsenal or something would be mad not to come and snap him up. Yeah. Um, I really don't like that Licksteiner fellow as well. By the way, but the less said about him, the better. Yeah, I know he was. He he wasn't. Um, he was diving into tackles and everything. Yeah. yeah so if anyone's seen my instant match reaction, yeah. then all my feelings on. Uh, on Lichtstein okay. anyway um, I just I hope someone breaks his leg or something. Oh, I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't wish that on anyone but you know I, so. yeah, no. <laughs> but um, just I suppose the, uh, the shame is Colin send it off you've seen it back um, what were your thoughts on it ok it's it's probably one of those that it's become a penalty in the last year or two with uh, with VAR and it goes on to well, I've seen it back and my view of it is Seamus's hand is a bit like this but in front of his body but in what a referee would call a non-natural position and I, I think two years ago it's not a penalty 
in the by the laws of the game, they, they don't seem to have changed, but the interpretation has. And these days it is given as a penalty. I know there was no VAR in the game, but that, I presume that's what I saw back on the TV. And even looked on the night, it looked like um, from the opposite end of the pitch, I was behind the other goal. It did look like a handball, but he was he was in front of his chest. So I, I can, can't really criticise the referee for giving the penalty. I'd say, yes, it was a penalty. It feels very harsh to also give a yellow card, particularly a second yellow card, which, again, it's not in the laws of the game. It's the same law for one yellow card or two, but I would think there generally is a higher threshold among referees to give a second yellow. But normally, if you give away a penalty with a handball, it's a, an automatic yellow card. So just feels like double punishment, double jeopardy with my green tinted specs on, I know. So... Yeah, unfortunately, you go back then to the, the stupid first yellow, really, is, and we we were missing our captain for the Denmark game now. Yeah, but I just thought when he was on the yellow at that time where he gave the ball away for the corner, the, the warning signs were there um, that maybe, you know, bring Matt Doherty on for him at that point. He's a straight swap, but he's not that much yeah. of a difference in class. Some people would probably say that he's better than Coleman at the moment. Yeah, um, some people were actually arguing that, so certainly yeah. in... Um, in be, before the match, they were saying. You can see, you see yeah. yeah, like you can see the, the different sides of the argument. I think Coleman gives us more defensively, but he just he just didn't seem right. I think that was the first time he's ever really let the country down. Probably let himself down more than anything else. Yeah, no, look, he's been a fantastic performer yeah. for us. He didn't oh, have a course. great. He didn't have a he's great my, international he's my break. Player ever. Yeah, so he didn't have a great international break. I mean, I, I still think we're going to miss him for Denmark. Um, just given the way the formation was, I think it might have made more sense to play Seamus in the back three and at the start with Enda Stevens and Matt Doherty as wing backs. But as you say, bring bring Matt on for Seamus. Even with hindsight, I appreciate you were saying it anyway. Yeah, he was on a yellow card. We had we never used our third substitution as it turned out anyway. So it would have probably would have made sense and been the thing to do. But look, hindsight's a beautiful yeah. thing. Um, but then. Obviously, from that uh, penalty given away from Seamus to send off, Darren Randall makes a fantastic save. And I think it goes without saying, he made three or four really yeah. big saves in that game. And he's probably made about five, six, seven in total in the group that have kept us in the position that we're in at the moment. People forget we are, as strange as it sounds, still top of the group. group. Yeah. The other teams have games in hand, which more than likely they're going to win and be very shocked, um, extremely shocked. Like I was when Leicester won the league type thing <laughs> with, um, if, if results don't go that way. So ultimately it comes down to um, the game against Denmark next month at home. But just to t- touch off on, on the last bit, but, um, it's a Shane Duffy's obviously own goal at the end. And Glenn Whelan making a fantastic block as well just before. Yeah. Uh, I thought Glenn Whelan's performance was something to be admired in regards. The rest of the team could take inspiration from a 35-year-old playing his heart at when we went down to 10 men. I thought Alan Brown, when he went to right back for the couple of minutes that he went there, he'd done a solid enough job. Um, for me, though, he, for me though, I would like to see Howard back in the midfield instead of him. I just think he offers more. He's, he's got more of a, he's got more of a, um, that bit of point about him. And he, I, I, he's I, always caught with scoring free kicks. I'd have, I, 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 not only scoring free kicks, but his delivery at set pieces. And I mean, the game against Denmark, if we're going to win it, set piece we have the twin threat now John Egan and Shane Duffy can both yeah um, but I mean quality delivery from set pieces um, is going to be absolutely crucial so I would I would play Conor Howard in as well yeah now just to, to, to kind of touch off um, the match facts anyway where they had 20 shots we had 9 shots they had 4 on target we had 2 on target um, the possession which was different on a couple of sites uh here I have 57 to 43. Um, on other, <coughs> excuse me, on other sites it was 60% to 40%. Um, they had 429 passes throughout the game. We had 335. Their pass accuracy was 80% and ours was 76%. They had eight corners and we had five. So if you, other than the shots, there isn't a lot there um, between the two teams as much as, as, as probably as bet, better as they are. Yeah, look, the better team won, and I think the stats are saying they were the better team, but I don't get the so much negativity. I mean, Switzerland are a quality side, and yeah, we mm. we weren't great in the first half, but it wasn't a, 
it wasn't a hammering either. The stats are saying the better team won. It was a one or two nil win. And unfortunately, when the you, you look at the quality of the players they have, uh, they, they've more than half their starting level in in the Bundesliga. If guys like the Benfica at Arsenal, they they have players playing at a higher level than we have. Yeah, and uh, consistently, yeah. consistently, and unfortunately th- that showed. And I I still think they are the best team in the group and yeah no I, 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 I would disagree with you there a couple of things I just wanted to ask you about um, from your own point of view being over there Aaron Connolly's performance I, I, I thought Aaron probably didn't really get into the game I think it didn't it didn't suit him the he um, he seemed very times doing this. yeah he had his hands in the air he, he was getting frustrated by the way we were playing as well Um I have no doubt he's got a, a very bright future ahead of, ahead of him in our side. He made a huge difference when he came on in Tbilisi. Um, for me, he still starts against Denmark. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd be in full agreement. And I think James Collins probably fallen down the pecking order considering the rise of Aaron Connolly. And if Didzi's back, which would be a huge, huge, huge thing if he's back for the Denmark game. But... Um, I think that we'll, we'll, wrap, we'll wrap it up there. I mean, we probably went into a couple more things in detail the last one, but unfortunately the sound cut off for that. Um, so I appreciate you uh, sticking around and doing it a second time, Gary. Um, <laughs> guys, if you haven't already followed Gary on Twitter, make sure and check him out, at Spain Gary uh, on Twitter, because I know a lot of you are big fans and he's always leaving nice comments about Gary and saying um, how brilliant he is. Um, Gar- Gary's going to do another video actually where he's going to explain the playoff situation if it comes down to it so uh, make sure you check that out too don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like the video we'll speak to you all soon thanks for watching